Rub up your engines! Diana Tacoma that moved from California to Nashville. The man is in the music business, so he left California, a wise move, and moved to Nashville. And he's happy for all these electrification people. This isn't electric, it's not even hybrid. But they were getting brownouts. They couldn't run all the air conditioners. They're telling people, turn them off for a while. And this is California, the land where everything's supposed to be electric. Lawnmowers, everything else. You can't run the air conditioning in your house. Put a few million electric vehicles plugged into the grid and then see what happens. Nobody at all in this country is set up for large volumes of electric cars. Even if somebody put in charging stations, where's the power going to come from? There's nothing built for a bunch of electric cars. You know California's pushing it all? Yeah, you can push, but if there's no electricity, guess what? The lights are gonna go out and the cars will be undrivable. Maybe the people in California will revolt like they did in the past with their tax proposition to freeze tax on houses like they did ages ago. Of course, it didn't work out too well. They kept raising all the taxes anyways. That's the problem with government gone wild. It's got a life of its own and it'll just keep going and going. Well, this guy was smart. He left California and went to Nashville where he doesn't have to deal with all that crap. Doesn't have to worry about that California inspection. Now, this vehicle was brought to me by his father who's visiting Nashville, they still live in California. He's got an old Honda Accord with 150,000 miles and he's gonna try to make it last forever. He hasn't fallen into this electric car. They get brownouts for electricity all the time. How can you add millions of cars to that grid? Basically, you can't. Now, this is a Toyota Tacoma, so of course, it's not gonna really have any problems for quite some time. It's only got like 15,000 miles on it. It's a four cylinder one. It's got the little back with the tiny little baby seats for miniature people. <laughs> Basically, it's for storing tools and stuff. It's the same as my son's old truck, only it's got all kinds of tools in it and garbage in the back. We open the hood. One of the most dependable engines Toyota ever made. Now, it does have intelligent variable valve timing, but being a 2020, it doesn't yet have all that insane dynamic force technology that Toyota's putting in their new engines that yes, the new ones do get better gas mileage, but it's at a level of technology that would blow your socks off. I would just put a bet on any of these that these older ones, and it's 2020, but it's still somewhat of an older design, will outlast those modern ones by far. It's so much simpler. It has less pressure in the fuel injection system. It's just a more basic design vehicle that's been proven to the test of time. Check this out. We're talking old school. It's got a actual fan, a mechanical fan with a four banger. There's plenty of working room. Although really, that's kind of a moot point because Toyota's hardly ever break. Getting there and doing some heavy duty work may never happen if you change the oil every 5,000 miles with synthetic oil. It may never break down. Being the old school design, it's got a mechanical water pump. Another tried and true simple design. Let's put on our thinking caps. How well does hot coolant mixed with hot water go with electric water pumps? <laughs> <laughs> yes, electricity and water aren't exactly things that go together that well, and eventually they will break and they will cost more money to fix. Sometimes technology gets a little bit too far advanced for somebody who wants something that's going to run forever and not have hardly any problems at all, and anybody can fix it. You can fix this with normal hand tools. You start getting to electronics, you need a guy like me, some fancy scan tools, a big knowledge of electronics, freeze frame oscilloscopes. They've gotten to that level of technology. Well, this thing unplugs on the top. It does have a plastic intake manifold, but they all do that these days. And now this is a four cylinder, 2.7 liter engine. It has a regular fuel injection system. The V6 has come with the direct fuel injection system, which is a lot more pressure. And believe me, it will wear out faster. Now, I'm not talking wear out fast like a Ford EcoBoost system. They're not turbocharged. There's no way it's going to last as long as something that's only got 40, 55 pounds pressure versus over a thousand. It's only common sense. They will wear out faster. And that's one of the strange anomalies. If you get the V6 engine version and you drive slow, which nobody's going to do, but if you did drive slow, you'll actually get about a mile a gallon better gas mileage on a highway with the V6 versus this. The V6 has direct injection, a dynamic force engine. It's a very complex system with a lot more horsepower in the V6 engine and can tow more. But at what cost? These systems have been known to go a million miles. 
The new ones will find out, but I doubt they'll go a million miles trouble free with all that pressure in them. There's just too much technology. I've already seen some problems in some of the new Toyotas with that electric water pump system where they're having overheating problems because everything's electronic. And if you know anything about electronics, if it can break, it will. And since it's all software, sometimes it's software problems, sometimes it's hardware problems, but it's a lot simpler to have a pump that runs off a belt that goes hundreds of thousands of miles than one that's controlled by a computer that has an electric pump soaked in hot coolant in an engine all the time. It's only logical. And yeah, you go inside, they're relatively spartan. It's a little pickup truck. It's a Toyota, so you know it's gonna start right up. And it has a six speed automatic, which you can either let shift itself, or if you want, you can shift up and down using the lever itself. And of course, they all have their backup cameras on it. It's a pretty basic one, but you see what you're getting. It's not a fancy one that'll show you all the different angles, but it works perfectly fine. And it has cloth seats. Looks like they have a dog. I see dog hair. <laughs> cloth seats will last forever if you take care of them. It's also a pickup truck, so no sunroof on this thing. Just a nice big back window you can look out of. Nice and high, great AC. Now everything can be done off the steering wheel if you want. As you can see under here, there's no front wheel drive. This is a classic pickup truck with a big old differential in the back. And it's also set up electronically to have a limited slip differential so you don't get stuck anywhere. You can see a solid frame truck. This isn't like a Bronco Sport with a unibody. This is an actual frame. These things can go through a lot and still come up smelling roses. And what everybody in a pickup truck wants, a full size spare, not some stupid little donut or no spare at all. You hang it down here so it doesn't take up space in the bed. And speaking of the bed, they put decent liners in these. Heck, my son's ancient one where the frame was riding away in Boston. The liner still looks brand new. <laughs> they did have frame problems in the past. Not anymore. They figured that out. They treat them so they don't rust anymore. Now he's got a little bit fancier wheels on it because he wanted to make it a little fancier. But really, you want to make it look fancier? You don't want to pay the Toyota dealer. They charge too much for that stuff. You can buy aftermarket stuff forever. They've been sold for so long. There's so much aftermarket. You want a fancier stereo? You can get Androids to blow these things away. 150 bucks. I mean, you don't pay the top dollar stuff for them. You want fancy wheels? Go out and buy them. Put them on yourself. You got all kinds of choice there. There's an aftermarket insanity for these things. But unlike the older Tacomas, that tended to be a little staid and boring, these have a good style to them. So you really don't have to change the headlights and the grill. They look good the way they are. So let's take it for a spin. We're nice and high up in the air. The classic rear wheel drive pickup truck. And for a truck, it's relatively quiet. I mean, it's a new truck, but it's not going bangity bang over the bumps. And it handles good. It's not a race car. It's a little pickup truck. And it handles quite well for a little pickup truck. The brakes are perfectly fine. ABS, all that stuff, traction control. We'll take it out the country road here. We'll get to our little drag strip. We'll try something different. We'll put it in first gear and we'll take off. We'll shift it manually. Had a lot more pickup that way because we'll come to a stop and now we'll do it in just regular drive. You'll see the difference. Here's regular drive. You notice this has a lot less acceleration. It shifts perfectly fine, but if you really want to get up and go, you can use the manual mode. It's not a race truck, but when you shift it yourself, you can have a little more fun. You can put it in second gear takeoff instead of first if it's slipping too much in first. Gives you a little more option. Heck, the main reason people buy these things is because they can last forever. They can haul all their crap. And they know it's going to start. They know the engine and transmission are going to last. And it's high enough up in the air that they can do some water waiting if they have to. And I'm sure this truck feels a lot more at home in Nashville than it ever did in California. 
<laughs> little four cylinder engine but no shake at idle nice and smooth not sure if you compare it to other trucks other trucks can ride a lot smoother have a lot more power but really there's nothing out that it's going to last as long as this thing will probably last it's responsive enough for a little pickup truck it's not clunky you know it's not a race car <laughs> you don't go taking corners at 90 miles an hour now if you're a long haul person like me and you want something that's going to last forever take it wherever you want to go mainly you're driving on a road you can't beat a four-cylinder toyota now on the other hand if you're thinking about pulling boats you're worried about getting stuck you might want four-wheel drive the v6 engine the higher level of technology that probably won't last quite as long mind you it's still a toyota but if you're a long-haul person you really can't beat a four-cylinder toyota pickup it's a classic small pickup it'll do what you want and then again small is a relative term this is a heck of a lot bigger than the old one that my son had that was like a 99 these small trucks have grown over time but if you want something like this you can't beat a four-cylinder tacoma you want something that could last for generations of people the gold standard of small pickup trucks and you can tell by the sales these things outsell the rangers so much as make your head spin it's made in texas made in usa it's not a Mexican one. I would always prefer the Texas Tacomas over the Mexican ones. That's just me. Has a little bit to do with quality and what workers are paid, but that's another story. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.